Right, first thing is chop down a tree. Standing dead there, we have a neem tree. And I'm gonna plant a new, maybe even two or three new, new neem trees. I'm always planting trees anyway, so I'm allowed to chop down a few trees if I plant them again. Okay, step number two is to dig a pit. And the pit can be any size whatsoever, but the main thing is it needs to be cone-shaped. So if you think of a funnel, it needs to be that shape. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make just a small pit. And the reason being is because the groundwater level here is about two feet down. So if I make a cone shape like this, the bigger it gets, the deeper I have to go. And I don't want to hit the, the ground level water level um, because at this time of the year, the monsoon, the water level has risen. Um, I don't know if you can appreciate it, but trust me, it's going to make the best biochar in the world. Because often, often what you do is you, um, you can get a metal container and you light a big fire under the metal container. You put your biochar inside the metal container and it's pretty much sealed off with air. You might have some holes down below and the gas gets burnt off as it exits the holes. But you use a lot more uh, firewood that way. So this method uses hardly any firewood and it creates 100% biochar, which is really, really smart. And as I said, you can make it as big as you want. I think I speed up the video now, eh? That's it. Come a bit closer, let's have a look. It's a perfectly uh, shaped cone shape. So as I'm layering the wood up here, and I keep layering it up it's going to start burning off the gas it's going to get really hot in there oxygen will be kind of cut off uh, down below which will make uh, our biochar that's basically what you have to do you have to cut off the oxygen uh, from the lower parts so just keep piling it on top and eventually I'll hose it down but first we'll have a bit of a fire that'll be fun So a bit of oxygen is important to get the flame going. For those of you who don't know how to make fires, basically at the moment there's not enough oxygen going in. As you can see all the smoke, also this wood is damp. So I'm just waiting now for the fire to actually catch up and create embers. Once it's done that I can throw in a bit more. So a bit of patience and let that whole thing burn for, for some time. I don't mind it creating a little bit of ash at the beginning, but I, I really need a, a good old flame here going and a center of embers. And then if I put some wet wood on it, it won't really matter. So it's getting there now, it's caught up a good bit. You can see it's actually creating very little smoke and I just have to keep feeding away. In fact, it might be good just to smother it down a bit now. See, it's creating a bit of black smoke now. So that was enough. Put some over there as well. And just let it blow, burn kind of slowly away. Sticking some there at the edge. Create no gaps. Oh, which is hot. What we need to do is we need to let the flames go up a little bit higher, like they are now. That's perfect kind of um, what you want. You also want the, the flames to be more at the edge. It being such a small uh, pit, it's very difficult to control. Uh, to, actually, it should actually spread out a bit more. So I'm gonna just let that burn away, let it drop a bit, and then I can throw in more, more timber. And that's then the correct way to do it. You literally want no smoke, and you want the fire to really, ouch, you want the fire really to go spreading around a bit. And it also helps to, once in a while, just push it gently down. Fall down a bit, and 
burn away. Right, so that's pretty much it. So I started off with small timbers and then gradually got bigger and then gradually I'm getting smaller and that just ensures that we create a lot of biochar. The smaller stuff burns off faster and basically we'll end up with a whole pile or a whole pit of biochar at the end. So, and then I just let it die down. You can also put water on it if you want. It works well too. I'm gonna create a lot of flames. That's what it's supposed to look like. They're doing a great job now. Just let that catch up a bit again. So you get the idea. That's how you make bio biochar. I'll uh, let it calm down now a little bit and then I'll show you again. Take another look at huh? Oh, that's hot. Woo! Have to get some potatoes or something. Mmm. What a beauty. All right, so the next step then is, usually what I do is I cover it up again and let it just uh, smolder away. I wait until the flames die down a bit and then I'm gonna put a wet hessian sack on top and then just cover uh, the soil on top of that and just leave it for maybe five, six hours. We'll see. Right. As you can see, as she's starting to turn to ash, we don't want that. Throw that on top. And very quickly, just do that. Voila! It's been about three hours. I might have to hose it down once I open this up because it's still very, very warm there. So it's still actually quite hot. Here we go, look at that beautiful, beautiful biochar. Okay. Oh, right, there we have it. Okay, that looks pretty good actually. I think most of it is actually out. So I'm shoveling it up. that sound? That's the sound of good biochar. It should sound a bit like glass. Then you know you've made good biochar. Oh, yes. All right, so that's it. All this biochar, most of it is biochar. There's a bit of sand in there, of course, and a few pieces of wood. If it was a bigger pit, I would have had a better, more even burn and but you can hear the glassy sound of it, so that's pretty good. Oh, just amazing. That's what you want, look at that. That's biochar. That's it. Totally burnt through. Nice sound to it. Ah, oh, wonderful. So the next step would be to actually use a big hammer or something to just rub it down grind it down because the smaller the particle size is the better because you can actually spread it more out uh, in your soil but also don't forget that the sponging holding activity is actually more more in like um, on a microscopic level because they stay you know form certain kind of uh, carbon chains that you can see under the microscope that, uh, microscope that looks like honey comb and uh, that's why it's such a good thing microbes can live in it very well even in a tiny bit of dust that is on my fingers here bacteria can actually live in those and, um, and also it has a very good surface area as well if you actually grind it down